this market, uh, working with a lot of key large carriers, also on data reconciliation with roaming, also with digital wallets, and just the whole link to IoT and running the networks. Um, they've obviously seen a lot of stress during this, you know, COVID. Their networks have had more traffic than ever between, you know, calls like this and just, you know, homeschooling and whatever. Uh, energy, oil, and gas, we work with two, Tradewind and Guild One, you know, that have been working with since the beginning. And then supply chain, last but not least, is probably going to be one of the most um, affected areas. They have been extremely amount of stress, you know, if you think about the kind of key players in there, manufacturers, logistics. Um, so really putting a lot of focus on that and developing standard development toolkits for the industry to kind of build and make it easier to kind of speed up what Anthony was saying, that, you know, long cycle to get into production. We'd like to collapse that down with development toolkits that the market can use to really accelerate that process. Next slide, please. So these are three um, on the top three areas that I wanted to focus on and then give you a little bit more, more detail on. So insurance, um, we opened the Center of Excellence for Insurance in 2017 with Accord, which is a standards organization. I know there's been a lot of questions on the call about standards in this space. So we, we worked with Accord um, to open the center and really at the beginning it was a sandbox. It was just kind of bringing, you know, kind of thought leadership in the 200 plus POCs that we did while we were in Worsham to kind of accelerate the insurance industry. Um, and one key player that we're working with is Ristream. So Ristream um, is, you know, founded back in 2017, formed by the institutes. The institutes is a non-for-profit. They funded the Ristream to start a collaboration with 40 of the largest PNC holders um, in the US. So the first two apps that they built was first notice a loss and proof of insurance. And if you think about the actual use cases, they're relatively small in insurance, but you know, proof of insurance, getting the actual policy onto the ledger, and then first notice a loss kicking off the claims process. And these two apps, you know, they recently did an ROI report that, you know, I think we're gonna share the slides after you can click on my slides and see where over the next three years can save $270 million, which is extremely significant. And we really, you know, open the gate to other apps we have built on it. Um, six, you know, we're working with SDX, which is a digital asset exchange. Six is working with SMB on really creating, you know, central bank money, uh, as well as tokenizing other assets. So a really exciting initiative there. You know, I briefly mentioned Marco Polo. You know, Marco Polo is a bank-focused network uh, focusing on receivable discounting, factor, and payment commitment. I won't, I won't steal too much of uh, their thunder, so I'll let them describe it in the, later in the, pod, in the meeting. Um, and then I mentioned the central bank digital currency. So we're working with risk, risk bank uh, on building an e-corona on Corda. Um, this is really exciting. I think, you know, it's going to be a complement to cash and ultimately, you know, as we see this evolve and we move more towards a digital economy, we'll become more, more of a focus across all central banks. Uh, Contour is another um, trade finance app that we're working on. It was actually um, kind of born out of the consortium. You know, we started working, collaborating with kind of Bangkok Bank, BMP, Citibank, uh, HSBC, ING, back in the early days of R3. And I'm happy to say they recently formed an entity last year and the head of our APAC team went over to be the CEO. But it's a really exciting initiative in regards to letter of credits and you know, processing that, which you know, has become more and more important because a lot of trade finance apps require physical signatures, which in this environment is extremely different, difficult. So to have kind of that, this platform ready to go piloting um, live, it's going to really help transform these different businesses. So Enrico, I think I stayed within my time. I don't know if there are any questions, but happy to kind of answer any and all. There are tons of questions. <laughs> so let's make sure that we stay in, in, in the time. Um, the first one is, does R3 intend to utilize Interledger protocol to tie private slash public blockchain settlement layers? How will R3 support interoperability of CBDCs when it comes to global trade, 
I'm afraid it's pretty technical, uh, but let me know if you want to answer this or I'll move to the next one. No, we've done several different POCs on interoperability across all the different industries. We do view that, you know, there's, you know, Corda is not the blockchain for everything and we're going to, we don't have that monopolistic view. So we do work with our partners on that interoperability and working on different, um, and then we also have a huge group, you know, going back to the standards of it. And, you know, I know there's been several questions on this and, you know, we work with over 200 plus regulators and all the different entities that we have people building court apps to help develop um, the regulations and the standards on this. We don't believe that, you know, it's our three position, you know, we, as far as, you know, driving it and helping kind of collaborate with the industry and bringing the different parties together, but not to really develop the standards ourselves. Great. Another question is related to the supply chain in food and agricultural uh, sector. How do you see solution interoperability since growers and processors feed many different sub-segments, segment chains like groceries, CPG and others? Yeah, so I really think that it's the fundamental kind of SDK, the standard amount toolkit that, you know, being built that's going to allow for that interoperability within the different, you know, sectors within supply, you know, because there are a lot of players within that market that we've been focusing on and, you know, the kind of the requirements for each are very niche, but giving a toolkit, kind of the fundamental architecture that would allow for future interoperability is kind of key to us. So being able to kind of give that to the market is one of the key things that we've been doing from an industry level. Okay, let me ask you uh, one more question. Um, oh, there's so many I have to pick. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would say this one, which is again, it's a recurring question about, let's say, KPIs and success uh, measures. So, with many projects in various industries, what are some what are some success metrics for these projects using Corda R three? Yeah, the early success message are really like the return on investment are really on lowering expense ratios. That's where we've started to see kind of the first, the early adopters start to start to see that ROI, kind of bringing expense ratios. So if you take insurance, expense ratios are typically somewhere between 25 and 35%. So it's really bringing those to a lower level. And then from there, I think what we're going to start to see is new business lines evolve for it because we're starting to see more and more in this digital transformation where blockchain is just a component. You know, it's that really shared truth. It's that fundamental, lack of a better word, block. But where, you know, when you think about insurance also, you'll start to see, you know, usage-based insurance. Once you have that data and you can share it real time and, it, you know, better access, more security, um, you'll start to see those new products. But the kind of the early KPIs or lower in expense ratios. Okay, okay, great. Uh, a last one and then we move to the next uh, session. Um, since we are also uh, looking at the cross, say cross industry applications, so we must not forget the financial services. Um, Carlos is asking, are banks wire transfers safer thanks to blockchain? How do banks wire? Safer. I safer? Mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's really, it goes back to like the fundamentals of blockchain, right? The security of it, you know, in a cryptographically secure way in a hashed, you know, that other access can't hack the information where, you know, unless, you know, in theory, if you had a whole attack, attack on the network, but, you know, it's, no one's ever broken SHA-256. So it's really the cryptographic hash that is making it more secure right now. And it's fast and it's real time. Okay, thank you very much, Ryan. We have to move to the next uh, uh, session.